morning and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration here at Our Lady Guadalupe Parish and Shrine. We would like to welcome all that are present here and extend a welcome those watching us from home. The Mass intention is for the soul of Jesus Moreno by Irene Moreno and for Martin and Angela Price by Susan McDonald. Our principal celebrant is Father Joe Fabier, assisted by Deacon Ricardo. Please tune in to your radio station to 100.9 to listen to the Mass. Thank you and God bless you. celebrate these sacred mysteries, the mystery of Christ's body and blood among us. Let us take a moment to call to mind our sins, remembering that God is mercy.
have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is a perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solitude. Or the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you. first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God. Through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Ten, five, five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones who had taken their lamps brought no oil with them. Wise brought flask of oil with her with her lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry: "Behold, the bridegroom! Come out to meet him!" Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, "Give us some of the, your oil, for our lamps are going out." wise ones reply, No, there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the mer merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, Open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay away, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, have you ever celebrated an outdoor mass before? I said, yes, of course. But this is my first time in a hurricane. <laughs> you may know the pastor of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish. His name is Father Mark Woodruff. Father Mark has a theory. He says, in any given parish, about one-third of the people will really like their priest. The other third will really not like their priest. And the final third don't care. I have given myself a mission today, and that is to preach so long 
and so badly that you will really miss Father David and pray even harder that he come back. So here we go. Now as we know, those of us who have come to Mass so often over the years and have listened to the Gospels attentively, the Word of God, we know that Jesus likes to speak in parables. And today he speaks in another parable. He tells us the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. Now it's important to remember that a parable is a cryptic story. It's a story with a hidden meaning inside it. And the goal of the parable is to stimulate thought, to make us think. Now you may say there, sing in your cards, Father, please don't make us think. We already have so much on our minds. Just say what you have to say and let us go, because really, all we really want is communion anyway. Well, that would be a mistake. And that would be unwise, because as Christians, we cannot go throughout life without pondering the deeper meaning of things and to know what we need in order to be ready for when the Lord comes. Now, the parable that we have today is not just a made-up story by Jesus. It actually has a basis in fact. It's actually a slice of life from first century Palestine and wedding customs. So let's look at those wedding customs of the time just briefly. Now a wedding in first century Palestine as later was considered a great, wonderful occasion. The whole village would turn out to accompany the couple to their new home. And they went by the longest possible road in order that they might receive the good wishes of, of as many people as possible. In Jewish custom, when a couple married, they did not go away on a honeymoon, but they stayed at home for a whole week. And they had a sort of an open house where all their best friends, their chosen ones, would come and, and visit with them. And the couple was treated, even addressed as Prince and princess. It was supposed to be the happiest, most joyful week of their lives. So the foolish virgins of the parable, they missed not only the actual marriage ceremony, but the whole week of festivities. Why? Because they were unprepared. Now in this Jewish custom, the bridegroom comes unexpectedly and sometimes in the middle of the night. And he was required to send out a man in the street who would shout, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. But that could happen at any time. So the bridal party has to be ready to go out into the street at any time to meet him whenever he chose to come. So looking at the parable, we have a number of symbols. And we have some main characters. We have to ask ourselves who these main characters represent. So we have the first group, the group of the virgins. Ten virgins. Five are wise and five are foolish. Who do they represent? Who do you think? They represent the Christian community. Then we have the bridegroom, the one who arrives unexpectedly. Who does the bridegroom represent? Jesus. Then we have the actual wedding feast. What does the wedding feast represent? The heavenly banquet. But you might not guess what the most important symbol of the whole parable is. It's not a person. It's actually an object. The most important symbol of the whole parable is oil. Because the oil, whether you have it or whether you don't, determines 
decides whether you get into the feast. Now I'm not talking about crude oil here, folks. So what does the oil represent? If we look at all of the Matthew, of Matthew's Gospel, the oil represents good works. I'll say it again. The oil in the parable represents good works. How do we know that? Well, if we go to the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus compares good deeds to the light of a lamp that must shine before others. Later in the same sermon, Jesus speaks about the Christian who says, Lord, Lord, but who fails to do the will of the Father. And to these people, the response will be, I never knew you. Which sounds a lot like the groom's response to the foolish virgins. I do not know you. So the point is that the oil represents the good works that are willed by the Father. That the Father wills for us. So in the parable, when the foolish virgins realize that they're running out of oil, they nervously ask the wise girls to share their oil. And what's the answer? No. Now that might seem to us like a harsh answer, like an unfair answer. Why won't they share? Well, the wise virgins are concerned that if the oil is depleted too fast, then everyone's light will go out. And that would create a very embarrassing situation for the young married couple. And I think for us that means if the Christian, if we stop doing good, if we let our oil deplete, then the whole world goes dark. If we stop doing good works, the whole world goes dark. So the real point of the parable then is to encourage us to stay strong and to persevere, to continue in good works. You see, it's one thing to start strong in the Christian life, to believe in Jesus and to make a commitment, but the commitment has to be sustained over time. Maybe after an acts retreat, I'm on fire. I get involved in all kinds of ministries, and then slowly, over time, I might get distracted or discouraged, and I go back to where I was. I mean, to be honest, even a priest, after years of service, can get discouraged. So the point is that no one is really exempt from this risk. We are all called to be wise in doing and persevering in good works. So there is a real danger that a believer can grow tired of doing good. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul says to us, Let us not grow tired of doing good, for in due time we shall reap our harvest, if we do not give up. In the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelations, the Lord himself said to the church in Ephesus, Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. So my brothers and sisters, I cannot think of anything worse than showing up at the door of the heavenly banquet and being told by the bridegroom, I don't know you. I cannot think of anything worse to be disavowed, disassociated, from the bridegroom. We will be recognized by how full our oil jar is of good works. Soon I will pray these words in the Eucharistic prayer. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who are labored and burdened. 
Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at His command. Every disciple, that's you and me, is offered the grace and the opportunity to continue in good works. To acquire the oil that we will need when the Lord returns. Only those who do so will be recognized by the bridegroom and welcomed into the wedding feast of heaven. And so we pray that we may be among those servants welcomed and recognized by the bridegroom into the bank. Dear brothers and sisters, together now, as a family of faith, let us profess what we believe. I believe, I believe in one, in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God not made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He has sent that to heaven, and has sent it to right hand and fall. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of the sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now present to our Heavenly Father our needs and our petitions, that He may graciously hear them and grant them. That all who minister in the church be leaders who serve and servants who lead. Let us pray to the Lord. That our country continue to honor all who have given the ultimate sacrifice in the quest for freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the veterans who give service to our country receive the honor and appreciation that they are due. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all burdened with memories of war and strife find comfort in Christ's message of love and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of this community and their loved ones who have died receive the abundant fruit of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we also pray for Father David for healing and also uh, Deacon Jesse for healing also. That God will give him healing that they'll be with us fairly soon. We ask, we pray to the Lord. And we also pray for the ones who have been affected with this coronavirus. We ask God to heal them and bring them to our, back to our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the ones who have died with the coronavirus or have died today and will die tomorrow, we ask, them, we ask God to bring them to the uh, heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those intentions you carry in the silence of your heart, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we have spoken and the ones we hold deep within our heart. 
We ask you to hear them because we make them in faith and in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. So, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. Broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ. Excuse me. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new home. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. 
grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through jesus christ your son Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. <laughs>
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be the my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. When you receive communion, make sure you have a hold of the, of the host before the priest or the minister. Let's go to the host. And also, be sure to consume in front of the ministers and the priest. Do not go with the host to your car. For those of you that cannot uh, receive at this time, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to separate my, to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have an announcement, so please pay attention. Good morning. My name is Miguel Guerra and I represent Drivewind Energy. We are a mobile basket and screening company and we will be here November the 24th from 8 o'clock in the morning to conduct these screenings. These uh, screenings are very important because allow us to detect on time any blockages that you might have in your arteries as well as any abnormalities that we can find in your organs. Since they have been to ultrasound, they are painless and uninvasive. The first screen we do is in the carotid arteries who run from the heart and go up to the brain on both sides of the neck. What we're looking for is fatty plaque buildup that can cause a stroke, which is the third largest killer in the United States. Then we take the abdomen and aorta. This is our main artery to run from the heart and go through the whole body and also supplies our body with oxygenated blood. Sometimes aneurysms can form in this artery, but we never know because of really any symptom. The only symptom known until today precisely when one of these aneurysms is to the point of rupture. And if a rupture, the person can bleed out internally in one to five minutes. we will do the COVID-19 screening completely free. So if you wish to participate in these screenings at the uh, exit, uh, they, they're going to hand you a form where you can put the name and phone number. This is designed to put two names and phone numbers. And I will pick up these forms and by the Casa de Amigos parking lot. And also I have forms over there. But also remember that if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or is any family history of any of these diseases, I cordially invite you to take these screenings at this, at this time, especially in this pandemic time that is so important to take these screenings. So thank you very much, and God bless you. As you know, at this time every week, we pray for everybody, anybody that's has had, has having birthdays this week or anniversaries. So kind of put your lights on or, or your parking lights or honk your horn so we'll know where you're at. No anniversaries or birthdays this week. Okay, all right. Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you to, we pray for you. For anybody that has asked having birthday this week, we thank you for the gift of life, for one more year of life. We ask you for many more years of life for the ones who are uh, celebrating birthdays, that they might have peace in their life, peace in their house. Also for anniversaries, that the blessing of marriage, the blessing of this wonderful sacrament of marriage, that they might be examples of the love of the world, that they might change their world around them, that through them, that the world might be changed. And we give you a blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Also at this time, also at this time, every week we also pray for vocations, where vocations are needed in our in, in our churches 
in our diocese. So let, let us pray. Lord Jesus, as you wouldn't call the first disciples to make them fishers of men, let your sweet invitation continue to resound. Come, follow me. Give young men and women the grace of responding quickly to your voice. Support our bishops, priests, and consecrated people in their apostolic labor. Grant perseverance to our seminarians and to all those who are carrying out the ideal of a life totally consecrated to your service. Mary, Mother of the Church, the model of every vocation, help us to say yes to the Lord who calls us to cooperate in the divine plan of salvation. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.